Welcome back to another Prairie Sunset Ranch Farm Vlog. This guy's Aaron, and thank you for tuning in, my friends. We got lots to do. We have a little bit of this to do. Yep. Yep. Let's throw in a little sprinkle of that. Turbo boot popped off. Freaking thing. Now you got a video. I had to hook up the old trailer. I know it's a gamble. The pre-Christmas sale is always a coin toss, but the old beef baron wants some beer money in the bank. So we're gonna go to auction and see what those prices are doing. I'll probably have the prices for you next video. And why the hell not? Let's, uh, let's let the old power stroke, the old 6.0 power joke break down on the highway. And you will be amazed as to what duct tape can fix on a good old power stroke. <laughs> And it hit minus 40 below, so let's go wreck the tractor in some cold weather. No, but seriously, it was hit minus 40. I think it was minus 41, whatever I showed you at the beginning of the video. But it got cold enough that I wanted to go out back. I wanted to give the girls a really good bail on the ground. Just check on them. I know I don't like running the, the equipment in that weather if I don't have to. I did preemptively feed up prior, but I thought it was already at that temperature where they need a little bit of extra something uh, to sustain them during that period but it's warm now so that's nice that's enough chit chat Aaron let's better better and get her Woo! apparently a lot of the calves are still going out east which I'm surprised I thought they'd already be uh, all the orders filled but I guess if enough animals show up a lot of the calves will be heading out east which is good for us I believe like especially the guys that left their cattle on pasture later this year I think we're gonna see more cattle going out like December, maybe even in January, just due to the fact that everyone brought them back from pasture so late, because we had a fairly decent uh, pasturing season. It was quite long and everyone took advantage of that, especially after being so long without feed. We just want to, uh, you know, save a buck or two where you can. Was it wise of us to bring them back later? I don't know. I was really gonna sell a lot of them right before in the old November rush, but we got lots of feed. I'm gonna hold on. Um, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. I hope I made the right choice. You know, it's a coin toss. Farming's a coin toss, but let's get at her. We're going to hook up to the trailer and we're gonna take a small load of steers and we got a handful of steers that sh could probably leave the feed lot. Uh, they're ready for sale. And it's gonna be our last paycheck until the spring, late winter. So we're gonna take a few in uh, because we gotta bring a bunch over from the heifer side and some more from the back. So uh, let's make a little bit of room and there's no point feeding them all winter. They're the big guys are already ready to go. So got lots to do. I think it's right down. Yeah. Basically the only thing these tow hooks are good for, <laughs> only thing these tow hooks are good for, hitting stuff. They're all hooked up. Check the signals. Check. 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 Good to go. Trailer's hooked up. Dad's got the uh, 6400. He's hitting there with it. It's not surging this morning, so I don't know. Could I think maybe a gelled fuel type deal. Hey, if you're digging these PSR videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. When you hit that thumbs up, it tells YouTube, hey, this video's okay. They open it up to a few more people rather than putting the hatchet down. So, thanks. Get a couple bucks, maybe pay for a tank of diesel, pay for some more carbon taxes. You know how it goes, save the world. Save the environment, one carbon tax dollar at a time, right, feet? Right, folks? It's not a money grab at all. Hello. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Damn twine. There's a twine in here. How did that happen? Come on. Let's go. 
Let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There. We got some big ones. Okay, yeah, there's one heifer that has to come out there. So we'll put these we'll put these guys in the front. With the exception. Get the one heifer out there. No more. Get that little heifer out. This guy. Yeah. That one right there. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. I'm coming. Both of it. Both. That's a half or two. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can put those three in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Yep. There. Tried to kill me. <laughs> We're gonna look for two or three more little guys. Not little guys, but we want around the seven to eight range. It is a steer as far left. This is a heifer, the bigger one's a heifer. Here's a nice steer. Yeah, there's a nice beefy guy. Let's go. This guy, right here. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll grab. Okay. There's a couple big ones, but we'll just take one. Yeah. Shut up, watch him. That's a big dude. I, I think that's all. All right, these are our next three steers. They're nice looking guys, they're in nice shape. They're not behemoth, but the guys the guys want something to feed up. And uh, I think these guys would be perfect for this. They're all uniform group. They're all almost the same size. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, yep. Let's go. Let's go. Hello. Yep. 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 Well, let me know what a cattle price is like out in your area. I'm taking in steers. They're anywhere from the, you know, let's say 650 to 800 pound range. They should all be in the 7, 800 range, hopefully. But what are steers going for? What are calves going for in your area? I know I'm hoping for 229 to 250 a pound. I'd be really happy with 250 a pound. I think that'd be great. But uh, I don't know what to expect from this December market. Let me know in the comment box below. Do you ever sell in December or kind of early on? Uh, I know this is kind of like too late for the fall rush and I should probably be holding off, but I'm only taking a few animals, just a little tester. That was pretty painless. Uh, I hope I get you know, that 15 to 1600 for these, these steers. Uh, here, dad, throw me that stick. Dad's gonna hit me with the stick. Good toss. Beautiful. So yeah, I think 1500, 1600, I'd be really happy. Um, do I normally sell this time of year? No, uh, but these were really big guys and I gotta make room because I'm gonna be hauling from the heifer side here like we do every year. And then some of these guys at the back, will be coming in here in the next month or so. So it's nice to have a little bit of uh, diesel money 
beer money uh, before Christmas and whatever can you do that's a cattle market flip a coin ideally I would have liked to sell in November obviously but uh, that was uh, just didn't work out because they were on pasture so we took advantage of the pasture as long as we could uh, just due to the fact that the nice year we had and we actually had growth so you saved on feed yes the plan was to sell them off pasture changed our minds just due to the fact that there's an abundance of feed and we'll see we'll see what happens i almost forgot i gotta lock this uh middle divider the partition there we go i have to say this flood just destroyed this part this side of the yard can't wait till we get to kind of move everything over Okay, you two opportunists. No escaping. Get back in there. Dakota, get back in there, you little escape artist. Good boy, Chev. Good boy, buddy. I gave uh, Chevy and uh, Dakota some goodies, so that's why they're hovering me. Successfully loaded six nice little, they're nice sized steers. They're all uniform. They're all that seven to eight hundred pound range, I would say. Um, I'm hoping for anywhere from 220, uh, you know, let's say 225 to 250 ish a pound. I'd be great with 250 a pound. I think, uh, I think they're worth that, but the market isn't as hot as it was. Most orders seem to be filled already. So these guys are kind of an, an afterthought. But uh, hey, we're gonna try our luck anyways. That's why we're not taking in 16 of them. We're just gonna take in these six and, and cool off until the spring. So by spring, I should say more like late winter, you know, February market. That's when we're gonna probably uh, dump majority of the, the calv lot. So um, it's been a pretty decent winter so far. We've had a few cold days like uh, we experienced there uh, <laughs> last few days, but uh, all in all, it's been a heck of a good year so far for, uh, for weather, for feed, and uh, everything. But knock on wood. Let me know in the comment box below, have you guys ever sold in uh, December? I really don't like hitting the pre-Christmas market. Uh, the only market I do like doing that with are the lambs. Our lambs seem to do really well. The, the uh, about two weeks before Christmas, that's when the lambs, if you have that 100 pound fat lamb, that's when they really, uh, you seem to get a good price, at least out here. But like this isn't comparable to no Cookstown prices or anything, you know, it's, it's a smaller market for lambs. This is cattle country, so everyone concentrates on cattle and calves. So anyways, that's, that's another thing. I might have to take some lambs in next week. We got about six or seven to go, so. Okay, little guys. Throw. Throw. Let's go. Got a kicker. <laughs> I was talking to the guy at the front gate there. He said there should be around a thousand uh, head of feeder calves, so it might be a decent sale. That's quite a bit. They're still flowing in pretty heavy duty, so that's a good thing. Probably be some good buyers showing up if there's uh, at least a thousand head, so. That's well, great. turbo boot popped off. Freaking thing. Side of the highway, I got an old clamp I found in my truck. I'm gonna to try to rig this up so I can make it home. Well, the clamp did not fit, so I ended up duct taping the turbo boot to the hot pipe, and I got to a repair shop in which put a proper clamp on for me. Trying to make it home. <laughs> Shit. So I do have to pull out my exhaust back pressure sensor. It's not that old, I'm gonna go clean it off. I'm gonna guess that's gonna solve my overboost problem. 
If not, could be my VGT solenoid. Let's hope not, that's a little more expensive. Let's hope it's that little crappy sensor that I replaced probably seven, eight months ago. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a video out this week of me fixing it, but I have it narrowed down. We got <laughs> two new clamps there. Um, but my problem is I actually unhooked it. This right in behind here, there's an EBP sensor. So what that, that sensor does, it's an exhaust back pressure sensor. So basically it tells the turbo how much boost to put in through the system. Basically it was boosting up to uh, 30 PSI, which I know that's an over boost problem. Uh, I typically never get over 19. So it blew the hot side tube off on the side of the highway. Luckily I had no animals on, I already did the drop off. So No shit, eh? <laughs> I'm not typically a guy that complains about winter, but minus 43 is harsh, so I gotta get the kids off to school and I gotta go check those water bowls because minus 43, I don't care if it's heated or not, it has a chance of failing. <laughs> and I don't wanna be defrosting a, a water bowl in minus 43 weather, that's just ridiculous, but uh, it's part of living in the Antarctic, right? <laughs> well, it's pretty harsh out here this morning. Uh, in the minus 40s. I started my tractor up, let it run for a half hour. I had it plugged in overnight. But I gotta go, I, I, I planned ahead. I knew it was gonna be really cold. I didn't think it would get down to this low. But once it hits, you know, minus 32, 33, and then with the wind chill, 41, 42, it's pretty dangerous. That's when hydraulic lines burst on your tractor and things go wrong, but I did feed up uh, yesterday pretty heavy day before really like I fed up a lot of bales I bet everything heavy but I feel like I got to start up and go give a bale to the girls so I'm gonna do a couple little things I'm gonna check the water and just do uh, a couple of things with the tractor nothing too crazy just nice light work so let's get at her I should almost have the sides covered up it's not even really warming up but we'll we'll idle her idle her up a little bit and uh, she should warm up okay I'm just gonna grab uh, just a stray uh, nice bale out here and uh, I'm gonna go take it, cut it, break it up uh, in the pasture there. I'm just gonna go through the back gate. Brings me to my next question for you folks. I know there's a few of you that do bale grazing. Um, let me know in the comment box below, how's that going? How much do you, do you find that they waste a lot? Do you find, you know, do you have a, a rough percentage of waste you get from uh, feeding that type of system? I'm really interested in that system. I've been researching it and asking around. Um, I don't know, that might be something to consider next year, especially with fuel costs being what they are now. And uh, you know, you get these cold days and it's hard on the equipment, right? That's when stuff goes, goes south, right? So let me know in the comment box below your feeding program or do you just put up in the feeders and then feed in between like we do eating a nice bale now out of the wind they still got lots of feed in their feeders let's move on i'm gonna go check the water bowls oh water looks good steamy and dreamy as it should be let's clean it out a little bit A couple panels down I just went and stood them up tied them up and uh, we're gonna probably haul in just a, a small load of steers tomorrow uh, get some beer money in the old bank account so uh, we're gonna just test the market and then uh, we're gonna be waiting until uh, February to sell the rest but uh, we got a few guys that uh, should probably go now they're ready to go they're big and uh, yeah we got to make a little bit of room we're gonna be bringing a bunch of other uh, calves into that lot in the next little while so we'll just free up a couple spots 
This is the John Deere surging. You hear that? John Deere surging. Well, I just changed the fuel filter on it the other day. Now it's surging. Kind of smooth out now. What the heck? Maybe it's hydraulic. It's too cold to look at it out here. When it's cold out, that's when all the gremlins come out of the machinery. Well, I'm really actually kind of liking this canary reed bedding. It's nice and uh, dry. It's not dusty at all. Sometimes you get straw that's pretty dusty, but I break it up and they pretty well spread it around. I bed them really good here, north or south side of the barns. Oh, it's really cold, coming in useful and uh, yeah I just break it up with the forks and they do the rest they pick through it so you see they're chewing on this uh, on these leaves so that's good that's good but uh, they got some really good feed in their bale uh, some bales in their feeders right now so they're not they're not hungry as you can tell <laughs> anyways yeah one pet there I noticed has a limp only thing I'm concerned about what she's eating but uh, I'm pretty sure she twisted her uh, hoof in one of these ruts uh, because we don't have that much snow, so there's lots of ruts still that uh, hardened up. Where is she? Hey, where's my pet? I think I see her over there. Here, right here. As you can see, she's quite, quite swollen. Yeah, yo, eh? Right on the joint here. Right here, I've been all monitoring it. I look, took a look underneath it. She doesn't have anything. Uh, she doesn't have anything stuck in it. I, I know it's not a nail or anything, but she's got a, a little bit of a joint injury there. So I'm just gonna monitor it and uh, hopefully it gets better. I've been watching her every day. It seems like she's putting a little more weight on it now. So hopefully another week or two, she's healed up. But, well, I'm going in, I'm frozen. Much like old Betsy, how she left me on the side of the highway. I'm leaving you for this week. We will catch you next weekend with an all new Prairie Sister Ranch Farm vlog. Be there or be square, my friends. We'll catch you then. Keep it sexy, you beast and beastettes. Bye for now.